Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Bill. Uh, today's video is going to be a prestige class video. We are going to do the Alienist. It is in the Tome and Blood from 3.0. Uh, it would be in whatever the combined uh, spellcasting class book was, 3.5. So, let's find the Alienist. We'll go over what you need to become an Alienist, prestige class-wise. To qualify for it and then we'll go over the table of the leveling and then we'll go into the details of the specials that you gain there we go so the requirements to become an alienist you must have Knowledge Arcana 8 ranks, so, and Knowledge the Plains 8 ranks. So in Pathfinder, I'd say you'd have to have 5 ranks. The reason is, is in 3rd edition D&D, you would get, your maximum ranks were equal to 3 plus your level at 1st level. And it would go up because of that starting cap by 1 per level. So instead of getting a miscellaneous bonus, which Pathfinder does at 1st level, the, uh, it was part of the actual ranks. So a fifth level character would have Knowledge Arcana 8 ranks in third edition D&D. So I'd make it five ranks for Pathfinder. Uh, feet, alertness, spells, ability to cast at least one divination spell and at least one summoning spell of third level or higher. Special prior contact with an alienist or a pseudo natural creature. So, as far as a Game Master mechanics would go, if they're interested in this, I'd give them a spell that allows them to summon a pseudonatural version of something off the table. And uh, I'd just look up the pseudonatural abilities in this class and toss it under that one summoning that they found, and that'd be their first time they make contact from a Game Master's perspective. So... If you meet all these requirements, you can become an alienist. An alienist has a hit dice of a D4. You gain no new weapon or armor proficiencies. So let's dive into the tables. You're, you have the worst base attack bonus progression. You start at a plus zero and it'll max out at a plus five at 10th level. Your will save is your best save at a plus two at the first level of the class, and it ends at a plus seven. Your fort and your reflex are your worst saves, so they are plus zeros, and they'll end at a plus three. Now, as far as your spells go with this class, every level of this class, you gain uh, a spell level of your existing spell class. So, say you were a fifth level wizard, and then you leveled into this, by the time you're 10th level in this, you're a 15th level wizard when you look at your spell tables and what spells you can have in a day, uh, what spell levels you have access to, so on and so forth. And as a wizard, you would gain spells every time, like two new spells to your spell book every time you, your spells, every time you gained a level in the class. Just how the progression would go normally. So if you were a sorcerer, same thing. So, the first thing you get is Summon Alien. At second level, you get Alien Blessing. At third level, you get Meta Magic Secret. At fourth level, you get Mad Certainty. At fifth level, you get Pseudo Natural Familiar. At sixth level, you get Extra Summoning. At seventh level, you get Meta Magic Secret. At eighth level, you get Insane Certainty. At ninth level, you get Timeless Secret. At 10th level, you get Transcendence. So, let's see what they actually do. Summon Alien. When an alienist casts Summon Monster Spell, they summon a pseudonatural version of a creature chosen from the appropriate list on page 258 of the Player's Handbook. For example, by casting Summon Monster 6, they can summon a pseudonatural Rast. This adds a pseudonatural template to the summon creature. If selected creature would normally be a celestial or fiendish, the pseudonatural template replaces that template. Okay. 
let's look at the pseudonatural creatures just so you have an idea of what that is then and then we'll go back to what's on the tables pseudonatural creatures dwell past the eons that lie between the stars beyond the plains as we know them nestled in realms of insanity so these are your hp lovecraft monsters uh, so as a summoner, I think that would be a great thing to play. And as a regular spellcaster that specializes in summoning, this would be a great class. Creating a pseudonatural creature. Pseudonatural is a template that can be added to any corporal creature. The creature's type changes to outsider. It uses all the base creature statistics and special abilities, except as noted here. Special attacks. True strike. Once per day, the creature can make a normal attack with a plus 20 insight modifier on a single attack roll. The creature is not affected by the mischance that applies to the attacks against the concealed target. If this wasn't just a summoned creature, I'd give it more often, but since it's a summoned creature, that's fine. Special qualities. A pseudonatural creature retains all the special qualities of the base creature and also gains the following. Electricity and acid resistance. And it's based on hit dice. Say one to three hit dice is five, four to seven is ten, 8 to 11 is 15, 12 and up is 20. Damage reduction, starting at four to seven hit dice, you have damage reduction five to a plus one magical weapon. Eight to 11, you have a five to a plus two magical weapon. And then 12 or more, you have 10 to a plus three magical weapon. And then you gain Spell resistance equal to double the creature's hit dice, maximum of 25. So at 13th level, 13 hit dice, it would have maximum. Alternate form, at will, the pseudonatural creature can take the form of a grotesque tentacle mass, but all this ability, but all its abilities remain unchanged despite the alien appearance. Changing shape it is a standard action. Other creatures receive a minus one morale penalty to attack rolls against a pseudonatural creature in this altered form. Abilities, same as the base creature, but intelligence is at least a three. And its challenge rating goes up if it had four or more hit dice by one for, with this template. Or if it had eight or more hit dice, it goes up by two. Treasure, same as base creature. Alignment, same as base creature. So if you're using it as actual creatures, those are the uh, some of the stuff you would need to know as a game master. Okay, so now you go into Alien Blessing. An alienist applies a plus one insight bonus to all saving throws, but she permanently loses two points of wisdom. Hmm interesting meta magic secret the alienist listens to secret voices whispered beyond a time's end and profits thereby at third level and seventh level uh, she may choose any meta magic feat as a bonus feat mad certainty at fourth level the alienist mad certainty is the power of entities beyond the reach of normal space and time lend her an unnatural fortitude she gains additional three hit points as though from toughness feet. However, constantly dwelling in such beings is mentally corrosive. The alienist's mind begins to fracture. Uh, she develops a phobia against specific kind of creatures, suffering minus two to saving throws, attack rolls, and charisma checks skills, and ability checks regarding these creatures. The selected creature gets a plus two morale modifier to AC and saves against that alienist. The DM determines that creature feared. Good choices include spiders, snakes, birds, and insects. Beings that share attributes with or those that resemble the selected creature also trigger the phobia. So toughness works different in Pathfinder. So I just give them the toughness from Pathfinder in it instead of this one. Pseudonatural familiar. On reaching 5th level, the alienist familiar, if any, gains the pseudonatural template. In addition, the powers and abilities normally for the familiar of the appropriate level. This does not replace the familiar. The original slowly takes on pseudonatural aspects, which become fully active at this point. From this point on, newly summoned familiars 
already possess the pseudo natural template. Extra summoning. From 6th level on, the LNS gains one extra spell slot at the highest spell level. This slot can be used only for summoning monster spells. As the Elenius becomes able to learn higher level spells, the extra slot migrates up to the new highest level. So that's cool. Insane Certainty. At 8th level, the Elenius Mad Certainty crystallizes into truly chilling mania. She gains an additional 3 hit points as though from the toughness feat, but her phobia likewise intensifies. All penalties and bonuses listed under Mad Certainty for a selected creature increases to minus 6 or plus 6. So, with that, I would just add 3 hit points. Like, I'd give them, for the first one, I'd give them toughness from Pathfinder, which would be, which translates to after third level of toughness, of total character level, you'd more or less just gain one hit point every level. So I'd give them that one. So by the time they would get the Insane Certainty, I'd just give them an extra three for the Insane Certainty. Timeless Body. At ninth level, the alienist learns the secret of perpetual youth. She no longer suffers the ability of penalties for aging and cannot be magically aged. Any penalties she may have already suffered, however, remain in place. Bonuses still occur, but the alien is, is stolen away by horrible entities when her time is up and she is never seen again. Transcendence. At 10th level, the alien is, through long associated with alien entities and intense study of insane creatures, transcends her mortal form and becomes an alien creature. Her type changes to outsider, which means, among other things, that she is no longer affected by spells that specifically target humanoids, such as Charm Person but she can be hedged out by magic circle spells against her alignment. Additionally, the alienist gains damage reduction 20 to a plus one uh, weapon and electricity resistance 20. Upon achieving transcendence, the alienist's appearance undergoes a m minor physical change, usually growing a small tentacle or other strange additional or sub substitution, such as an extra appendage, organ, eye, enigmatic lump. The alienist can hide this abnormality in a robe or hood, but the alien growth is not under the alienist's control and sometimes moves, twitches, opens, and otherwise is animates of its own accord. Anyone who shares the alienist's predilection for studying of the far realms immediately recognizes her transcendent nature and they gain a plus two circumstance modifier on all charisma-based skill checks and ability checks when interacting with such beings. She gains a plus two modifier on intimidation checks against all other creatures to whom she reveals her abnormal nature. And that is the aliens. Very, very fun summoning class, in my opinion. Especially if you lean into the horror aspect. So... It's definitely a class I would play, and most of my modifications would just be like I was saying. I'd change the toughness to the Pathfinder toughness, maybe do that for both toughness gains, so it would double up on itself, which it's not supposed to do, but hey, it's like a wizard class with a D4 hit points in Pathfinders. I mean, in 3rd edition, so... Your attack rolls are never going to be good, but you keep gaining spells, so your spells will be great. Your pseudo-natural creatures could do a lot. Now, if you took a summoner and went into this, this would be even better for you. Because now your summonings all of a sudden got more powerful uh, as they're arriving on the battlefield. In addition to that, you would take the appropriate summoning feats and you would be really good. Now, as far as the extra summoning goes, I don't like the fact that it's only one uh, spell slot. It's cool, but it's not great. I would take extra summoning and I'd modify it by uh, your spell casting modifier. So if you're a wizard, your intelligence modifier, you gain that many extra spell slots. I wouldn't make all of them your highest. I'd just make, start it at your highest and for each bonus you got, you the slot below it, the slot below it, the slot below it. Um, and then for a sorcerer, do it your charisma modifier. So, well, there's the alienist. If y'all have seen an alienist, uh, if y'all have played an alienist, if an alienist is cool to you guys, uh, put it in the comments below. Let me know what y'all think. Well, until we all game again.